this one is by specialized, right? Specialized, uh, so they have used, uh, this is the battery, uh, this is $6,000 bicycle, right? So they've used, they call it turbo. They have the motor here, they have got the battery in the controller here. $6,000 price tag. So now you see the bicycle companies jumping in the fray and trying to integrate bicycle science with electric bicycles. So we begin to see now a marriage beginning to take place. Now there's a company in Florida called Prodeco and uh, they have done a decent job of uh, bringing the cost down. So their products uh, start at I believe $1,200 and they have a fairly decent product pretty decent components and, and electric bike components. So it is one of the most successful companies in the U.S. today. Is, uh, this one is more expensive one. I think it's more in the range of $4,000 to $5,000. So it's got a little motor and a little battery, right? So they're trying to go as close to a bicycle as possible. A good attempt, right? A fairly decent attempt. This is a cruiser from Carago. It's a California company. They have been also very successful. They're focused more on cruisers. And it's a small market, but it's a strong market, uh, especially uh, on the West Coast, where people want to ride the cruisers on, on the beaches. Uh, so in 2011, Bosch, right? Everybody knows Bosch, right? Bosch uh, introduced a motor. And they are obviously, uh, you know, uh, based in Germany. And Germany is the second largest market in Western Europe after Netherlands, right? So when they introduce the motor, they basically, in German, there is requirements. You know, people want to have a certain amount of certain gearing in the back. They want to have a dynamo on the front. So they were forced to do a motor in the pedal, and they have a battery pack here, right? So here, essentially, um, when they introduced their product, uh, people in Europe really jumped on the opportunity to integrate their system in the bikes. So this is a company called Haybike, who introduced this, uh, who, who have integrated this system in the bicycle. And it has taken Europe by storm, uh, and it has been quite popular. And the reason is not that they have got the great technology. The reason is that it is Bosch, and it is reliable. One of the issues in the electric bicycle industry has been the reliability of it. Right. And because, and this is normally a, a problem with any industry, when you are at the bottom of the S-curve, you, you know, the, the processes and the manufacturing is not mature. So, Bosch, you know, they took their existing whatever appliance technology, tools technology, and applied to electric bicycles. Uh, it is a simple application of what they already have on the shelf and put it on a bicycle, and it actually has taken off quite a bit in, uh, in Europe. So, so there is a convergence taking place in, uh, in in Europe, where you have got, you know, the market. So you have got the cost coming down, the consumer acceptance rising rapidly, and and you have the maturing uh, taking place. So here, um, is it close to a bicycle? It is getting there, right? It is getting there. It is it is quite a compromise to be able to have that there, right? It is still not close to a bicycle. And this goes down to the heart of, at least my philosophy, is being able to, the weight is an issue, right? The weight is a big issue. Uh, integration into bicycle is a big issue. And, and then you have the styling is a big issue, right? All these uh, really contribute to, and then this is what the heart of at least uh, our philosophy has been that e-bike must act and behave like a bike. That's important. Um, so the observations, which let me summarize for you know all of you, it basically are not elegant enough, are not attractive enough, not useful enough, and and most of them throw cycling signs to dogs. And if I have an e-bike, can I not have a regular bike? Why do I have to own two? Two uh, bicycles, you know, one electric bicycle, one, you know, I should be able to convert 
my electric bike into bicycle or vice versa, right? When we, when we sat down to design the propulsion system, we essentially considered these factors. How do you eliminate the issue of portability? How do you eliminate the issue of range? Paddling difficulty, when you have a motor <coughs> and you begin to pedal uh, direct drive, you have got paddling difficulty, right? Uh, you have to have, uh, they have low top speed, uh, you have low hill climbing ability. And uh, e-bike must remain a bike, right? It has to be quiet, it has to be efficient, it has to be really have the efficiency of a bicycle. When you don't have an efficiency of a bicycle, then an e-bike inherently is going to be inefficient. So we, uh, we developed what is called five-phase motor architecture, right? Now, uh, one of the things I have learned, and maybe it is, it is something which I have learned foolishly, I don't know, uh, but I would, I would put it on the table in front of you to consider it, that when you are trying to design a product, Uh, you have to rein in your fears and go for the ultimate product. Let me explain that. Uh, if, uh, so, engineers have more of a problem because we deal with developing a product, right? So, if I were to design this smartphone, and I have designed a smartphone, let's say, before, and I know the process, right? It was very difficult to get this right. I had to do the design, the drawing, at least 10 times. I had to do the ECO 10 times. I had to uh, sit with the software programmer 10 times to make sure that the interface or the PCB was right, right? Now, all those details are in your head. Now, when you, when you go to design a next generation e-bike, you really want to throw all those details out. And, and, and let, those details should not hold you back. So, so, when we, so that was one of the struggles I had to do, was to go beyond the lessons which I had learned, because they were holding me back. So we went beyond what could, was possible at that time, so we went with the five-phase uh, technology, which has worked very nicely, and then we have got the wireless console, which was so we're the first company to do the wireless console, first company to do the five-phase motor technology, and really trying to make everything simple in terms of integration into a regular bicycle. It is all about, so electric bike is not about an electric bike, it is always about a bicycle, right? And this is really our components. You can see you have the battery, the motor, and the console. So you convert a bicycle like that, and off you go. And you don't lose the bicycle, right? Now, there are a lot of features here. I'll go through this quickly. Uh, this is all the marketing talk, right? Highly compact design, pure wires, is installation like this, blah, 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 right? Good stuff. Um, direct and precise port control, zero distance settling, customizable, wireless command console, three in one. So here you can actually, in the winter, when you can't ride the bicycle, put it on a, on a regular trainer and you have an exercise machine because you can have degenerative, uh, it, it, the motor becomes a generator, now you can charge your battery. So you don't need an extra... So you have got uh, bicycle functions, electric bike function, and then you have got the fitness function. And N plus, if you are aware, that is, you're going to have heart rate monitors, etc. with that, right? Simplicity. Uh, simplicity. That's, that's the philosophy, right? It has to be simple. The bike must remain a bike. You don't distort the bike. You don't mangle it. You don't make a monster out of it. And uh, these are some of the conversions, some of the customers, and that's it. Thank you very much.